While new images are being released every single day from the James Webb Space Telescope or JWST in their raw format, you know, as they come fresh off the telescope on the MAST Data Science Archive website, we've not had any new colorized images released by NASA and ESA since those first five that were dropped in mid-July until last week when they released this beautiful image of the Cartwheel Galaxy that I could honestly stare at all day. Now, before we dive into like the science behind this image and what's going on and what we can see, I just wanted to give you a little bit of context between what the raw images look like and then what the colorized images that NASA and ESA released look like. So this is what the raw images look like fresh off the telescope of the Cartwheel Galaxy. It's noisy, it's not had the brightness calibrated, and they're black and white, for want of a better term, right? The detectors on board the telescope essentially just record where light is and light isn't detected and the light it's detecting is infrared light as well that we can't see with our eyes. So there's no sort of true colour you could make these images, unlike the Hubble images where, say, you do take an image through a filter that only lets through red light. You can colour that red and you know that that would be the colour that you would see with your eyes. But these images are infrared and so they're a false colour. And we do this to try and pick out some of the details still that our eyes would miss otherwise in black and white. So we still take images taken through different filters from the shortest to the longest wavelengths and we colour them different colours so that it's easier for our eyes to pick out. And we still stick to the idea that shorter wavelengths are bluer colours and longer wavelengths are redder colours, even if it's not technically a true colour mapping. So shorter infrared wavelengths, which are given out by hotter objects like stars, are coloured blue, and longer wavelengths given out by colder things like gas and dust are coloured red. So that's how we get from the raw images like this to the processed image, which has been cleaned up to remove the noise and then coloured so our eyes can pick out certain features and pass the scientific information the telescope's infrared images are providing. If you want to know more on this, check out the video I made last year on whether the colour in space images is real. I'll link it down below in the video description. So you'll now know what I mean when I say that this gorgeous image of the Cartwheel Galaxy is what's known as a composite image because it's lots of different filters coloured with different colours all shown in one image. First of all, you've got this image from the near cam detector which detects the lower infrared wavelengths and you've got different filters from the shortest, the longest wavelengths shown in blue, orange and yellow. And these wavelengths peer through the dust to show where hot stars are. Then you've got this image that was recorded by MIRI at much longer wavelengths that are then shown in red colours in the final image. And this reveals where the cooler gas and dust are glowing in the galaxy. So in terms of science, I think there was three sort of big questions that people had about this image. First of all, what can it teach us about the Cartwheel Galaxy and how it formed? Second of all, what are these objects that appear to move between the James Webb image taken in 2022 and the Hubble image taken back in 1995? And question three, like all new JWST images at the minute, what is in the background that we didn't expect to see that's just as exciting? But let's not get ahead of ourselves. Let's start with question one, first of all. And what can we expect to learn from these new JWST images of the Cartwheel Galaxy? Now, I made a video about the Cartwheel Galaxy on my channel before, back in 2019. Again, I'll link it below if you want to watch. But just to summarise that video fairly quickly, the Cartwheel Galaxy is a very rare type of galaxy. First of all, you'll notice it doesn't really have any spiral arms like you would come to expect in flat disk galaxies. Instead, it has this giant ring around the outside and also a secondary ring right in the very centre as well. Now, we think this weird shape of the Cartwheel Galaxy was made in a head-on collision. So, like, here's the Cartwheel Galaxy nice and flat, probably with spiral arms at the time and then another one came in and just plopped straight through it like a pebble being dropped into like a pond or something. That collision threw out material in all directions giving us this ring shape around the edge kind of like the rim of a crater formed when an asteroid hits the earth or the moon. Now all the stars in that ring are around about 200 million years old and you think well something must have triggered them to all form at that time we can assume that the collision was about 200 million years ago and the shock wave from that collision 
collision is what caused this huge big star forming ring around the galaxy. But you've also got these spokes that give the cartwheel galaxy its name reaching out towards that ring that Miri really reveals in all of their glory. And we think these are the spiral arms of the galaxy slowly reforming after the collision. The problem is that all the simulations and models that we run to try and recreate the, the formation of the cartwheel galaxy in this sort of like head-on collision scenario can't get the spiral arms to start reforming in such a short space of time, in just 200 million years. It needs a lot longer than that before everything settles back down and the spiral arms can start to reform. Now, these models are very dependent on the interaction between all the stars and gas and dust in a galaxy, and therefore you need to know how all of those things are distributed in the galaxy to get a pretty good model of it. The image from the Hubble Space Telescope only reveals where the stars are, and also only those stars not shrouded in dust. And remnants of collisions and mergers of galaxies are notoriously dusty because, well, mergers, they just stir shit up in the process. So what JWST has given us is both a more accurate map of the positions of the stars, revealing those, you know, previously hidden by the dust with the near cam image, but also revealed the spokes of the cartwheel are much thicker they appear in visible light with Hubble, right? But also that there are still gaps, right? They are spokes rather than just, you know, a region with less stars and more dust giving the appearance of a ring. And then the Miri image really shows off the filamentary structure in the dust itself, revealing the forces at play here to bring these spiral arms back to life so that they reform. So hopefully these new JWST observations are really going to help to reveal how this crazy shape of the cartwheel galaxy is actually formed, you know, improving our simulations and our models of this. So I'm sure there's loads of my colleagues across the world right now who have got their hands on this data and are doing exactly that. And all the rest of us have to do is just be patient because good, careful science takes time. But you know, when there is a research paper published on this, you know I'll be reading it and translating it for you guys and chatting about it right here on my channel. So make sure you subscribe so you don't miss that. All right, the next question I noticed people asking in response to the posting of these images on Twitter by NASA were what were these points that were moving in between the Hubble image taken back in 1995 and the JWST image in 2022. There's this really bright thing up here, these two inside the ring, and then this one over here by this galaxy as well. Those are stars in our own galaxy, in the foreground of this image that have essentially like photobombed the cartwheel galaxy, right? And the movement is essentially due to a combination of a couple of things. First of all, that, you know, all the stars in the galaxy and the sun included in the solar system are moving around the center of the galaxy. So our perspective as we look at this has changed ever so slightly and that perspective shift is going to have a bigger effect on nearby objects rather than very distant objects that are millions of light years away like the cartwheel galaxy. It's the same thing that you would see you know driving in a car how you see trees on the side of the road whipping past you very quickly whereas your perspective on the scenery in the distance changes much more slowly. And you've also got the stars themselves moving relative to the sun and us here on earth. So yes in the Milky Way there is this general trend for rotation of all the stars in one direction as they orbit the very center. But the star's positions aren't fixed relative to each other. They have unique velocities and orbits, which is why all these stars don't shift by the same amount in these two images. And again, for stars closer to us, that shift is going to appear much larger, even if their relative velocities are so small than the ones further away in the Milky Way. And thanks to ESA's Gaia mission, which is mapping the positions and relative velocities of over 1 billion stars in the nearby Milky Way, we have a pretty good idea on how this is all happening in the Milky Way as well. So this relative motion giving us this movement of these foreground stars in an image is actually really handy for picking out which objects are part of the cartwheel galaxy and which ones are just photobobbing the image. And finally, that third question, is there anything exciting in the background as well? And yes, of course there is, because these are JWST images. And as we've learned, and we keep joking, that because JWST is so sensitive, there's just 
no like empty space anymore. It's always going to reveal something, you know, that Hubble missed because it wasn't sensitive enough. Like, for example, you've got this beautiful barred spiral galaxy over here, and then this pair of spiral here that are obviously much further away than the Carbo galaxy. They're much smaller. And then plus you've got the less visually spectacular tiny blobs of galaxies that are incredibly huge distances that everyone's been getting excited over, you know, trying to find the most distant one ever found. But check out my video from a few weeks ago on why we can't claim we've definitely found the most distant one just yet. And what's really cool is that you can pick out the background galaxies behind the Cartwheel galaxy that overlap with it thanks to this sort of colouring of the different filters and wavelengths. These galaxies stand out because they're so much brighter in that orangey-yellow colour that we know is coming from those longest of near-infrared wavelengths that NearCam detected. Whereas the stars in the Cartwheel galaxy just formed, they're giving off mostly shorter infrared wavelengths which are showing up in that filter that was coloured blue. So there's so much that we can piece out from these different images taken by different filters from JWST. And if you want to have a play around with the raw data yourself, I've linked the data archive where all the old and new JWST images are stored in the video description down below. And so all that's left to do is for us just to wait for people to analyze this mesmerizing image in the hope that, you know, one day we'll finally understand the weird and crazy shape of the Cartwheel Galaxy. Before we get to the bloopers, a huge thank you to Brilliant for sponsoring this week's video. Brilliant is a STEM learning platform with interactive courses on a huge range of science and maths and computer science topics that get you to learn by doing. The way I personally learn best, because you get to immerse yourself in a topic, going at your own pace with Brilliant, with extra help if you get stuck. It's just perfect for at home or on the go. Now, I know a lot of you out there are aspiring astrophysicists, you know, as I once was, and Brilliant has a fantastic astrophysics course if you want to dive into that, which covers, you know, all of the fundamentals. But a lot of astrophysics requires confident math skills. I know that's not everybody's strong point, so I always say, practice, practice, practice. So also check out Brilliant's Everyday Maths course, which gets you to practice those important concepts in maths, but with everyday settings. So the context is more familiar to make learning the less familiar maths that much easier. So if that sounds like something you'd be up for, to sign up completely for free, head to brilliant.org forward slash Dr. Becky, or you can click on the link in the video description down below. The first 200 people that go to that link will get 20% off an annual premium subscription. So thank you so much to Brilliant for sponsoring this video. And now, roll those bloopers. <laughs> the background that we didn't expect to see, but is just as exciting. But let's start with question one for now. That was three again. <laughs> <laughs> and it's black and white, right? So the detectors... <laughs> that was too many syllables. The detectors... <laughs> It's because I recorded my audiobook the other day and there's one chapter in it that has the word detectors so many times that it just, it lost all meaning to me and I kept stumbling over it and apparently I'm still doing it. The remnants of collisions and, hang on, this is a word I always say wrong and everyone always picks me up on it. I want to say remnants. I can see it written down, it's, it's remnants. Like, I think like, I'm just putting an extra syllable into it for no reason, okay. I have to really, like, try very hard to say this right in the next take. His collisions and mergers are just noto notorious, notorious. Da, da, da. Any chance I can draw that into conversation? I mean, I'll have to retake that now, but it was worth it. <laughs> oh, I'm so tired this week. Oh, man. Why is it that my tiredness like correlates with the amount of words I wrote in my research papers in a week? <laughs> Space is hard and words are harder. 